Hey everyone, Ashish Sanit this side from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to another exciting video in the series of ESP IDF. Today we will learn that how you can connect your ESP32 with the Firebase real-time database. I'm sure you have seen one of my previous video where I've shown you the same scenario with respect to the Arduino IDE. But in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate you everything with respect to the ESP IDF. So I hope you are going to love it. So let's move ahead and let's understand that how are we going to connect ESP32 to the Firebase to perform all the functionalities with the proper authentication. So let's move ahead and let's understand how do we do it. All right, everyone. Now we will move to the coding part and we will see that how are we going to connect our ESP32 to the Firebase and accordingly we will be able to publish and read the data from that Firebase. So how are we going to do that? For that I already have the code with me. Let me show you where I have the code and also I'll share you the link with that. So you can see this is the code of your Firebase account or you can say uh, the complete functionality which we will be covering up in today's video. So this is the entire code for that. So what I'll simply do is I'll simply uh, you can say copy this link and I'll simply uh, download it or you can say we can also clone it onto our current directory or any other directory where do you want to store it on your system right so let me do that quickly so I'll simply clone it all right so you can see it's cloned successfully and it's cloned on okay so let me open it up all right everyone so now you can see we have the code in here and these are all the files and components which are required right so inside this this uh, main.cpp this is the main coding in which we will write everything that is required for uh, sending up the data uh, and uh, to read the data from that server right so we'll uh, see all of this stuff and apart from that here we also have this firebase underscore config dot h so if i'll go in here you can see we will simply uh, pass the parameters for ssid for password and for the api key and for the database url from where you will be like uh, connecting your esp32 to the firebase and also you will pass the username and password through which you will be linking to your firebase account right so we'll see all this stuff and from where you will get this API key and all this stuff, uh, I'll show you that either. Now let's understand the code. For that, go to the main.cpp under which we have all the code written, right? So I'll explain you what exactly we are doing in here. Just because we are using ESP32 and ESP32 cannot directly connect to the Firebase or any server. And to connect it to the server, we need to first connect it to the internet. Just because ESP32 has an inbuilt Wi-Fi in it, so we will simply use the Wi-Fi uh, in the STA mode so that we can connect it to the internet. And for that, we need to pass the SSID and password, which we have already passed under this. So it's, it will simply use that and on the basis of that, it will first connect to the internet. And once you are connected to the internet, we'll start connecting to the server. And the server which I'm talking right now is the Firebase server for which we will provide the links over here. Or you can say we'll provide the database URL over here. And just because it's a private uh, or you can say the secured network. So for that we need the authentication as well. And for that we have the API key which we'll provide in here. Right. So that's the reason we'll first connect to the server and then we will pass the api key so that we can authenticate it and then we will log in to that server and after that we will access the database under which we will store the data we'll read the data we'll delete the data or you can say we'll perform all the functionalities that is needed to do on the firebase account so this is all that we'll be doing and once you are connected to the database rest is just the CRUD operations. Basically, you can read the data, you can write the data, you can delete the data. So this is all the things that we are doing in here, 
right so you can check this code i'll attach the link in the description so that you can check it and you can start implementing it for yourself so this is all about it now let's move ahead to the next step and that is to get the credentials of your api key and the firebase database url so let's get all this stuff so that we can have this functionality working in live as well right so for that let me go to the uh, firebase open a new tab let's search for firebase so you can see you have got this i'll simply open it up and uh, just go to console if you are not logged in first you have to log in then only you can go inside uh, to the console so i'm already logged in so i can directly go in here just click on add project and just give it a name let's say esp idf and uh, fire okay i have this name and this is the unique one nobody is using it so i'll confirm this and i'll continue scroll down and just continue again select an account just default one i'm using and just click on create project it will take few minutes and after that it's gonna be done so the project is ready we can continue so now you can see we are inside now we are about to link it to the real time database right so for that i'll check where is real time database so you can see under build we have this real time database just click on that and uh, here we can simply create a database here you can select the region where you are right now so you can select it press next here it will ask you which one do you want to use whether you want to start with a logged mode or you want to start with a test mode testing mode uh, you can use because it's gonna be free and it will not have any authentication or any problem while connecting so if you want to start with this we can start with this if you want the authentication thing and you don't want anyone else to access it without your permissions and all so for the private thing you can go for it but for now just because it's a demonstration thing that's why i'm gonna go with test mode so i'll click on this and i'll enable it so you can see we have the uh, real database or you can say real time database created now you can see this is the url or this is the database url which we have to copy so i'll simply copy it just copy this just go to the code here you can see this is the one which is the database url so here you have to replace it so just paste it you can see we have it here right now similarly the next thing is we want the api key let's find that for that click on this project settings service account data secret here you can see we have this uh, secret just click on show and you can copy it right now just go back paste it right so in this way we have added the api key and the url now the next thing is you have to add the user email and password so i'll go back and uh, use them or create them now let's go here under build scroll down and check for authentication just click on authentication click on get started now let's click on users here you have to authenticate and manage users from a variety of providers without server side code so you can click on this setup sign in method and here you can set up which method you want i'll use the email method so it will be better i'll save it now go back to users again so here you can see now you can add a new user so i'll simply click on this just simply add the email id which you want
and just enter the password for that for now i'm passing a very simple password so that i can demonstrate it to you all right so now everything is set up successfully so you just need to add uh, this uh, username and password as well so for that just go to the code again So I'm done with everything. Now the next thing is that I simply have to upload this code to the ESP32 and to check that whether we are able to get the data uploaded and to be get read back from the Firebase real-time database. So let's upload it and let's check it. All right, everyone. So you can see the code is uploaded successfully, and now it will try to connect to the Wi-Fi, which uh, I have provided the credentials for. And uh, currently, it looks like uh, we have got some uh, error in here. Uh, let's see what is it. All right, everyone. So you can see uh, I'm able to successfully uh, push the data. Uh, from a ESP32 to the Firebase account and you can see everything is working fine first time it did uh, this error but it's okay we can ignore that for now because it's not creating any problem because all the commands that I'm trying to push it's pushing and we are able to get the data on the Firebase account and now let me tell you what's the uh, problem that why we were getting that issue before and at that time we were not able to push it so the reason is that here if you will go to the firebase config at the end i forgot to add this extra slash so this slash was an issue maybe just because of that it was not able to get the complete uh, routing or the url for that so that's the reason i was getting it but now you can see everything is uh, getting sent successfully now let me show you that whether we are getting the data on the real time database or not so for that let me go there so you can see i'm already onto this page real time database so here we have the data already present over here the data which i sent from the coding that is present in here right so let me do one thing just to show you that i haven't added anything manually so i'll simply try to make a little bit changes in here and i'll try to change the values just to show you that everything is fine and it's not done as per me let me make the changes so you can see i have made all the changes in here so let me do one thing let me restart my device i'll simply restart it you can see it is restarted and it is trying to connect to the network again now let's wait for it i'm not making any changes see the values are updated automatically right so in this way you can see what's happening all the values are getting updated from the esp32 side doesn't matter that whether you're changing it or not so if the value is changed here and you're sending some different value from esp32 that is going to be updated into your real-time database right so this is how you can update the values on the firebase account so this was it i hope you have liked this video if you have liked this video do click on the like button and if you're new to this channel and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet do click on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any videos from our channel so this was it see you in the next video till then bye bye and happy learning